Good evening, Restoration Chapel. We are excited today to continue our uh, traveling story series. I told you about this um, uh, and on um, Wednesday night, um, and we are excited about it. Today, we have our special guest, Alan Rhodes. He is uh, the pastor at Belmont. He's actually bishop at Belmont, uh, Church of God of Prophecy in Anderson. Um, the great thing about Brother Alan and his family um, if I'm not mistaken, he got started at Williamston Church of God of Prophecy, um, and uh, we're excited to to um, ask him some questions and learn some information from him, and really uh, find out about um, how God changes lives, and that's what we're going to do today. So, Brother Allen, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Pastor Bobby. No problem at all, and um, he is our first one to do this, so if we have any glitches, uh, it's okay, because that's what we're trying to figure out, so uh, it's perfectly fine, um, but the first thing I want to ask you is this, um, just kind of give us a, a, a background, um, did you grow up in church, um, uh, and just kind of your childhood, and uh, just real quick, just kind of give us a background of where you started at um, before you were saved, and kind of um, how your life was before you encountered Jesus? Well, uh, I did. I did grow up in church, Pastor, and uh, and I actually grew up in the church that you pastor, Restoration Chapel. It's always been a, a great church, and I always had great pastors, and uh, and now they have a great one today. We appreciate you and your your ministry, you and your wife and family. Um, I, like I said, I did grow up in church and uh, grew up in a minister's home. My mom and dad uh, served the Lord, and my dad was a minister, pastor, uh, some during his, his time as, uh, uh, when he was physically able to. Um, and then uh, I, um, just like uh, all you know, teenagers, I guess, I, I strayed away and uh, was in and out of church and in and out of with my relationship with the Lord. And um, I guess I was, you asked the question, what was my life like before him? I guess I was just at a crossroads between trying to wanting to do what was right and serve the Lord, but at the same time wanting to, you know, you know, just do the things that I wanted to do, um, the influences that I were around and I wanted to get into things I shouldn't get into and do things I shouldn't do. Um, but that's, you know, that's typical. I think we've all been down that road. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's what I was about to say too. And, and I think a lot of people, um, you know, when we think of a testimony a lot of times, some of us thinks about, uh, you know, people that have came out of drugs or alcohol or different things like that. But some of us, uh, and most of us, I would say almost probably 75% of us, we, we kind of knew what right and wrong was, but we just didn't make the choice um to live for god we were kind of in that in between yes, um, yes. And, and you know and i think that um i think people need to hear that because i think a lot of people they get discouraged because when they go to tell their testimony they say well i don't have this big you know i was at death's door and god say you know that kind of yeah. stuff but your testimony could even be you know i was just going through life not sure which way to live you know what i'm saying kind of like what yeah. you were saying um, there was a kind of an inner battle of, hey, I know what's good and I know what's wrong, but I want to live for myself. That's right. And, you know, and I, and I think that's a big deal to, especially for this younger generation that, um, and like you said, you lived in a minister's home. So you grew up in the church and there's a lot of this younger generation that has been in church, um, but they just uh, haven't had a relationship with God. And, that's right. and I think that's a big deal. And with that being said, you know, when do you remember, and, and I know, like you said, you was in church all along. So you've That's heard right. the Bible stories, you've heard the scriptures, you you were a part of, um, I, if I'm not mistaken, you've seen many miracles, you've seen speaking in Absolutely. tongues, you've seen all that, but you still didn't make a decision until you had an encounter with Jesus. Do you remember when that encounter was and how that was? I, I do. Um, like I said, me, me being raised in church was back and forth. Uh, you know, with, in, in and out of my relationship with the Lord. But in 1995, uh, Rhonda and I was married in 94. In 1995, um, I had an encounter there at Restoration Chapel, which, you know, was, was recognized as the Williamson Church God Prophecy at that time. Mm -hmm. And um, and I knew God had done, spoke something into my life. Uh, a lady by the name of Myrtle Phillips 
was up singing that morning and God began to really speak into my heart. And uh, I gave my life to the Lord. And I knew I was at a place where uh, the games that I had been playing with the Lord in the past were over with that I needed to make up my, I needed to make up my mind. I felt like God was really speaking to my heart saying, okay, now this is that time you need to quit playing games with me. I've got a plan for your life and I need that plan fulfilled. And, um, and I need to use you, but most of all, I need to save you. And, uh, and I recognized that that day that I needed to give my life to him. And, um, and then I recognize, you know, when I, I keep playing games in your own, I played games as a, as a teenager. And like you said, I heard all the stories. I've seen the miracles, but I still, you know, I still ran from the Lord, ran from what I knew I needed to do. And uh, I surrendered my life that day. And, and I, you know, I can't say that I would love to tell you that it's been perfect, that I've been this great Christian, that I've done everything right. But, but I would be far from the truth, Pastor. I've, you know, I, I've, you know, I've had my shortcomings and my failures and my, and, and those things. And, uh, but I'm glad for God's grace that, you know, even in the midst of all of that, God, you know, loved me enough and cared for me to give me an, an, another chance. And I'm thankful for that. Now, when, when you got, now I know you said it was a Sunday morning when you gave your life to God, when, when Sister Myrtle was up singing, um, and, and you might've mentioned this a little bit, but was it, was it a sudden, hey, I need to change, or was it a dealing with over weeks, times, months, time, or was it just that morning, hey, um, God just moved in my heart right then to go, and I went, I went to the altar, or I went and prayed, or, you know, I, I said the, the sinner's prayer, or was it, um, you know, a battle for a couple of weeks where you had church, and it kind of battled back and forth? I think it was actually had been going on for uh, a couple of years that God had really been speaking into my heart. And, uh, and like I said, when I'm, I'm Rhonda and I met, then we started dating and then we got married in 94. Um, I felt like God was really dealing with me all alone that I needed to surrender and I really needed to change my life. Um, I don't think it was just that one moment he spoke to me and said, if this is the day, but, but, but which he did, you know, he yeah. let me know that I needed to surrender at that time. But I think it was something that had been going on. You know, he had been speaking into my heart for a while, definitely. and 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 I was just being hard headed. You know, yes, and definitely. And the reason, and, yeah, and the reason why I asked that because I know there's a lot of people nowadays that are dealing with that. They feel like, um, they feel like there's a struggle within, yeah. and um, and you know, and it takes. It might be a moment. It might be a song. It might be a word. It might be a. Uh, uh, just uh, a friend speaking to you, you know, that kind of thing. But again, we, we have to make that choice um, to, to surrender, as you said. And, um, and, and, you know, like you said, uh, the, it was during a song, you, you just felt like, hey, this, this is the time. I've been in this struggle. It's time to stop that battle, which there's still a battle after we're saved. And we know that sure. as, as pastors, we know that as saved Christians. But it, it feels, and, and that's what the next question I want to ask you, when you gave your life to God, and if you, you know, remember, and, and I know you probably do, because I remember, do you remember how you felt like that after that? How, how did I feel after yes. I got saved? Yes, right. I mean, you know, I know when I got saved, I, uh, Brother Suggs was at the pastor at the church when I got saved. And, um, and I remember after I got saved, the first thing I asked was, uh, um, what can I do? You know what I'm saying? Um, but I was so excited, but it was a peace inside of me. Like you said, that struggle felt like it was gone. Now there's other struggles that came along, but that struggle of not knowing him um, was the, you know, that, that felt that peace inside my life. And, and, and like I said, I, I'm, I, I kind of figure with you, cause I mean, we've talked before um, that struggle. I know when you gave your life to Jesus, how that probably just, I don't say went away, but there was a peace. That's right. Absolutely. It, there was, and it was a, a, a peace and, and I, and I knew that I needed to, you know, like I said a moment ago, the games had to be over, you know, it was time to get serious with my relationship with the Lord. And, um, and such a peace came over my, over my life. And, and, uh, I began to look at things different. I began to look at people different and, uh, it was just such a change that, you know, it's sometimes words can't even describe, you know, the, the, 
the magnitude of, of you know, of, in the, what just took place in, in my life, you know, and, you know, I've, I've read about it. I've experienced it before, but it, it, but when that happened at that moment, I knew that it was something different this time Definitely. because I knew, you know, God had really done something in me, not that he had before, but I was at a place now where I was really ready to change. And yeah. that's the key. That's the key. You know, when God's dealing with people, you know, and we see people, they get saved and they, and they, they seem like they're on fire for the Lord for a little while. And then they go back. Sometimes it's because they wasn't really ready to change that moment. They was, I like to say they, sometimes they just prayed off conviction, you know, and, um, until they felt better. Mm -hmm. But then there's just people who, who, you know, they, they given their life to the Lord. And, and I, that's where I was. I think in times past, I just prayed you know, to, I felt better about myself, Definitely. you know, but I never truly experienced the change. But that day in 95, I truly experienced the change and it made all the difference in the world. Definitely. I think our youth pastor puts it good. Um, we, we have moments where we come into the presence of God. And, and like you said, there's things in our life we want to change, but not totally submit everything. Um, so, you know, like, you know, there, there might've been a battle, um, you know, if you're dealing with an addiction or you're dealing with a identity problem or something like that, you might hand that over. But then there's that time where you have that true encounter. Um, like you said, when, when you know, I need to change everything. I need to lay everything down at the feet of Jesus. Kind of like, uh, a Paul, you know, or, or well, saw at the time when he's on the road to Damascus, he has this encounter with God that just changes his whole um, concept of Jesus, you know, um, or, you know, the, the woman with the issue of blood, she was in the presence of God and touched Jesus and she could have easily got up and probably would have been healed. But then she has this another encounter when God says, who touched me, she knows, Hey, it's more than just being healed. It's this encounter with Jesus. Yes. And, 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 and I believe, like you said, there's been many of us that go down to the altar multiple times. And we want to change a little bit here and change a little bit there and that kind of stuff. But when we come to that mindset through seeking God or hearing his word and praying and, and listening to people and things like that, we get to a point where we're like, I got to completely change That's over right. my life, you know, and it's a truly encounter. Um, like you said, I mean, it's a encounter with God, a, 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 move, a move where we had to make that decision. Hey, I'm going to, just give over to him to let him take over total, total surrender. Definitely. Total surrender. Definitely. Now after that, and, and, um, I know, uh, when we were prepping for this, I didn't ask you this, but it just came to my mind. Um, you grew up, uh, uh, church of God of prophecy. So we've always heard uh, salvation is salvation gets you to heaven. We know that, you know, That's it's right. a daily walk. We come constantly come to Jesus and salvation. Um, do you remember the day like you were sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost? Did it happen all at one time or was it a steady growth? I, I got saved that morning, but I, it was it was a little while later before I got sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. And and and, and I, I, you didn't I, one a definition I like to use for sanctification is a change of loves. Yeah. And uh, I changed from the things I used to love until to the things that I you know, the things of God, you know, the yeah. things I desired before my desires change, my loves change. Yeah. Um, I just want to throw that in there. <laughs> yeah, no, that's perfect. That's perfect. Cause yeah, I, I, and, and the reason why I ask you that, because we do have a lot of people that's going to watch this have been saved and, right. and, and we preach and, and I know you preach and, and, and I'm hoping more, more pastors are preaching about sanctification and sure. baptism with the Holy ghost. And, and I like how you put that, the change, uh, the change of loves is am I correct? Is that what you That's said? Right. Yes. Yeah. Um, um, I've always put it as, hey, we once lived in this house and then we yeah. come to God and he puts us in this house. But then through the transform our mind, a lot of times we want to go back to our old house because we lived there for so long. But yeah. now we have to transform our mind to say, hey, I don't live there anymore. I live here now. You know what I'm saying? So, right. so we have yeah. to transform and be sanctified and get into the mindset of, Hey, I don't go back to what I used to be. I go to this new place that God has taken me, but I love that change of loves because like you said, now I don't love what I used to love. I love Jesus and allow him to take over my life, the spirit, the Holy ghost to take over our life. And I'm glad that you said it took a little while because in my life, it did the same thing um, yes. because some people, and, and I know people that have gotten saved, sanctified, filled the Holy ghost 
and you probably do too, all at one time. Um, but I, again, 50, 60% of people, it has to be, a, a, I don't want to say, it, it takes time. It takes time. Um, and especially new, pe- new believers that don't really understand what sanctification and baptism of the Holy Ghost is. That's um, right. and, and, you know, and that's the reason why I wanted to ask you that. And again, even with baptism of the Holy Ghost, did that happen right after you got sanctified or was that a, a, a progress too? That, that happened at the same time. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I said, after I got saved, it was a little while later, uh, even though I understood it, you know, yes. from well, the, to the best of my knowledge, I understood it at that time. Um, but, you know, it wasn't a process, you know, it, it took a little bit of time and uh, for me and, um, uh, and, and I don't know if maybe it was just I had a hard time just still letting go of, of things, you know, that yeah. makes sense. And, uh, and then I, and when I got sanctified, I got filled with the Holy Ghost at the same time. And, and man, it just, you know, it just, you know, I felt like that, you know, it just all of this, you know, salvation, man, was just, you know, it was just wonderful. But then when I got sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost, it's like it just added a little extra something to all of it. You know what I mean? Definitely, so definitely. And, uh, it, and it did change. It did change my my desires, my love, the things that I used to love and desire, the things of the world that I didn't desire that anymore. It, it done a change in my heart. And uh, I used to think that when a person got sanctified, we were like the, the long ranger, so to speak, or or we were – you know, we were out there and, and the devil didn't mess with us anymore, even though I wasn't taught that. Yeah. It's just kind of the way I always thought it to become. But then I realized after I got sanctified, I thought, wait a minute now, you know, he doesn't <laughs> stop, you know, Definitely. it's like he just intensifies. Definitely. But um, but he gave me the power to say no through sanct- being sanctified mm-hmm. and you changing my loves. And then when he filled me with the Holy Ghost, it, which like happened at the same time, uh, you know, I, I knew then that, you know, something had, changed this time that something happened this time that had happened in the past Definitely. that you know something really different was with this time Definitely. you know and uh, and and, I, and i'm and i'm so thankful for that you know just thankful for what god done in my life definitely definitely and you know and i love it because um i, I think you know you know the sanctification and and baptism of the holy ghost is something that we really need to strive for as christians nowadays because again the flesh has lived a certain way for so long and when you get saved that first week is usually the best week you ever had but then that second week comes and it feels like the devil is going to come after you and you know and, and i really believe through sanctification and through the baptism of the holy ghost in a daily walk it has to be daily and daily, we believe that it has to be daily um that we come to him and just ask him to fill us and, and not just fill us, but overflow us and change us. And, um, and, and it helps us go through this world, especially in the time that we're in right now. Sure, um, sure. Without that, it's hard to have hope. It's hard to have, even through salvation, it's hard to have hope. That, but that sanctification and that baptism of the Holy Ghost gives us that power to let us have that hope. That's right. Absolutely. Definitely. Um, so now that, now that we, you know, you've been saved, you, you, you've been sanctified, you've been filled with the Holy Ghost. Um, and, and I've asked you about this because I, I know a lot of young men, a lot of, a lot of young women, um, that somehow they feel like God's calling them to something. They don't know what. Do you remember when God called you into the ministry? I think that um, as far as my calling, um, I think that it's always been there as long as I can remember. Yes. Even as a, a young child, uh, even before salvation, yeah. correct? Yeah, even before salvation, yeah. I knew uh, I could kind of identify somewhat with Jeremiah and what he says in Jeremiah chapter one. That you know, isn't as God said, even as a child, I called you, even when you was in your mother's womb, and um, so I kind of identified with that, and um, and I felt like God did even as a as a child. But as I went through my teenage years and, and young adult life, and I feel like that I um, is I didn't think about it. I just I wanted, like I said earlier, I just wanted to do my own thing. But it was always there, you know. Yeah. That I knew I always knew. At times I didn't. A lot of times I didn't think about it. But there was times when I knew, you know, I knew that God had a plan. His hand was upon my life, and um, so I guess the wind has always been. Definitely, you know? definitely. 
and, you know, nobody came and, you know, and, and spoke to me and said, I think you're going to be a pastor one day or, or visions or dreams or anything like that. And then after I got saved and I go back to 95, after I got saved in 95, um, I felt such a drawing to the word. And uh, that was, I just wanted to, and, and I felt like God was speaking to me through his word. It wasn't through, uh, like I said just a moment ago, it wasn't through someone laying hands on me, a dream. I felt like it was through his word. So so the wind, I guess, has always been, mm-hmm. but it kind of, kind of, in, in after I got saved and I truly committed my life to the Lord, sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost, it's like it then, at that time, it's like it just the Lord said, okay, you know, you know, I, I've been dealing with you all these years about not just being saved, but also about this calling I got for your life. Definitely. And I think then the revelation and the realization just came about that, hey, you know, there has been something there. And so I guess the wind has been all my life. How? I think it was just through his word, him just yeah. drawing me to his word. And uh, and I would find scriptures. I could open up my Bible and just find scriptures about preaching, uh, about you know where God called Paul to to be a chosen vessel, mm-hmm. and um, and I just knew. I said, you know, I knew then that the Lord was was calling me to to not just you know not just be saved, but to to do a work. And there's ministry to be done. Definitely. And uh, I feel like He's given me a heart for to see people come to the Lord. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I, I love it when we see the miracles in the church and people get healed, but just to see somebody, pastor Bobby come to the Lord and give their life to him, man, it just, it, that, I, that just, does, it's almost like I, I say it sometimes. It's almost like I got saved all over again, yeah. seeing that, person get saved, yeah. you know, yeah. seeing them experience that. And, um, uh, so, and I, I think that's, that's the when and the how it's always been there. And the how was he was just drawing me to to his word and the when I guess I say it's always been but then in in 1995 it's like the Lord just said you know I didn't just save you and deliver you from a devil's hell I've done a change in your life and the change I've done and I want to use you to 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 uh, and begin to draw me back to his word and said, I want to use you to make a difference in people's lives. And, and I think that's awesome. And, and I think I, I'm, again, I'm, man, I'm so glad that we're starting off with you because this is amazing. Cause this is exactly how I feel a lot of times, you know, I, in, before I was saved, I felt like God was calling me to something bigger, something, and even if it wasn't, I thought was God. I felt like something was calling me to something bigger. That's and, right. That's and it right. kind of, it kind of reminds me of a, a cell phone. Um, you know, it all has a purpose, right? But um, if you don't plug it up, it just goes dead. I mean, it, and then the purpose is not there anymore. And I feel like there's so many people that feel like God or somebody is calling them to something bigger, but they're just going dead because they never plug into the source of God. And when they plug into the source of God, that's when, again, through his word, he began to speak to you and say, hey, you know him that you had a purpose, you know, you had that, but now that power is flowing through you. So you can begin to do the work that he's called you to. And, sure. and, and, and I believe that's amazing. And, and if I'm not mistaken, you started out as a youth, kind of like a youth pastor in a way. I, I did. I started out a uh, youth pastor and then teaching the teenage class. And, uh, I done some, you know, uh, Sunday school superintendent, um, with, uh, Jackie Thompson there at Williamston. And, uh, yeah, and, and, and I, and I loved it. Uh, and, and my wife Rhonda, she was working with the children Definitely. and, uh, there was just something about those seeing, you know, a young person come to know the Lord. And, and I could look at some of the young guys that came around and, and I could think, well, you know what, it kind of reminded me of myself, you know, some of them raised in church, some of them wasn't kind of remind me of myself and, um, uh, and seeing where I came from. You know? Absolutely. And, and see, and I love that too, because um, it, like me, you, I don't want to say you worked your way up through, but you understood that, hey, just because God's calling me, that doesn't mean I have to be in front of 100 people, 200 people, 300 people sure. and preaching. It might be in a young person's life or it might be in a Sunday school class or it might be serving somehow like a Sunday school superintendent where you might not even be teaching. You might just be uh, serving the other Sunday school teachers, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and cause ministry and 
I, I, like I said, I was going to bring a lot of pastors on here, but ministry is more than just pastoring. Sure. And you, you would agree. I know you would agree with that 150%. I mean, um, all the way to the greeter, to the person that cuts the grass, um, to the one that cleans the bathrooms. I mean, you know, uh, yeah. it, it's all a ministry. And, and we all need to realize that, you know, uh, that ministry part is more than just getting up on a Sunday or Wednesday night and speaking. Uh, and uh, it's a life it's got to be a lifestyle it's got to be a complete lifestyle um if you would have something to say to a young uh young person or even uh you know a mid-aged person or elder that just came to god and um i know we preach salvation all the time and like you said we've been speaking about salvation it's one of the greatest things ever um it would it would be great to see people healed it's great to see people's lives changed. but seeing somebody saved i think like you said is even bigger than those miracles because you know even if they don't get healed they're going to be with god that's right and they're sure. going to be with god you know um what would you tell uh, uh somebody that if, if it's one of the last words you could say and you've already spoke about salvation and um, either a scripture or a Bible story or something like that, what would you, what would you just bring to that, to the table, to that person? If you could just tell them anything about God or about living for God, that kind of thing. Well, the, the one thing that the Lord has been really dealing with me about since the end of last year and in the beginning of this year is, is identity. And uh, I actually did a series of messages at our church own uh, identity and uh it's ironic i was preaching those series at the same time the movie overcomer come out mm -hmm. and uh and there's also a book that goes along with that movie it's called defined finding god's purpose for your life finding out who you are in god and uh and and, and god be really begin to deal with me about that i even preached about that this past sunday in our parking lot service at the church is identity and and i think that as far as believers go, you know, we want to preach salvation to those that are not saved and we want to see them come to know the Lord as a personal savior, but to a believer, someone that's already saved, I believe the, you know, I believe the message, if I had to preach today to someone like that, I believe I would talk about their identity, who they are in Christ. And, um, cause that's the most important thing. And, and the thing that God's teaching me is it's not about, He's teaching me, so in return, I'm, I'm sharing it with others, um, that it's not about people's opinions of us. That's, that don't define our identity. It's not about, you know, you and I being pastors. It's not about pastors or titles. You know, you got people who, who get saved, and they know there's a call in there we talked about earlier, and, and they focus so much, and, and that's good. They focus so much on that calling and, and there's nothing wrong with that but they we need to bring them back and help them to understand before you were ever called who are you who are you in christ before jesus ever performed his first miracle the father looked at him and said you are my beloved son i spoke from heaven and said you are my beloved son in whom i am well pleased before jesus ever performed a miracle and 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 i think that's the thing that he's been teaching me and that that I think we need to, that I need to, you know, share with others. And if I had to have a sermon to preach today, you know, the last, you know, and it wasn't on salvation, that would be it. Your identity in Christ. Definitely. You know, because so often, so often we, we concentrate and, and we, we focus on the titles and the opinions and the crowd. And, you know, but, but reality is, you know, at the end of the day, and when everything's said and done, it's him that we got to stand before. Amen. And we've got to hear him say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Or, this, or, or do we at the end of the day, do we hear him say, this is my beloved son and you I am well pleased. And that's what we want to hear him say. So that's what I would say to somebody today that's starting out, you know, in their walk with the Lord. You know, don't get so, don't, don't get so caught up and, and trying to do it so right, you know, and, and just just live your life to please the Lord. Mm -hmm. Search the scriptures and find out who you are in Him. Who am I? You know, and, and Bobby, Pastor, I, I've been asking myself that question so often, like, who am I in Him? Amen. You know, who am I? 
it's not about the position that I hold. And I know I keep saying this. It's not about the title that I have. It's not about the, the, the certificate on the wall that says that, you know, my license on the wall or, or the degree that I have in seminary. It's about who I am in him that makes all the difference in the world. Amen. You know? Amen. And that's what we need to help people to realize that's that you have a father that loves you regardless of your faults and failures. And when people, man, I feel this today, when, when people get to a place and they come to know the Lord, man, we can't, they got to understand they don't have to be perfect. They don't have to try to, to, to do all the right stuff. You know, they don't need to, you know, they, it takes time and they need, you know, sometimes people get frustrated because they're trying to learn Genesis through revelations and all the maps in the back, yes. you know, and, uh, and they're trying to understand all of this stuff and, and they find themselves falling short. And, and, but, and, and I think when we help people to realize, you know what, you've got a father that loves you. You may not know all this stuff and it's okay. Just realize that you got a father that loves you, and he. When you fall down, you can get back up. He can help you. You got to not just have a father to help you get back up, but he's got brothers and sisters in, in the family of God that's mm -hmm. there to help you to get back up as well. Amen. So I guess that would be my thing. Um, yeah. I know that was probably more than what you no, no, <laughs> was, that was that asking is, for. That is that. perfect. That is perfect because I believe that's something that, um, especially in the the times that we're living in now people need to know who they are in christ that's right um, and, and i think that's not just a that's a, not just a, a salvation question but that's a christian question that's um, right we are in christ and 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 we're not we can't be identified like you said by our title our denomination we can't be identified by you know we need to be identified as a child of god and and, and i i totally agree with that and um if I love how you said it. If everything was taken away, who would you be? That's right. Or who would you know you are? Not who would you be? Because some of us would think we are um, just worthless or shame, you know, and that kind of stuff. But but if we would truly get that identity, like you were talking about, then even when everything else is taken away, if our title was taken away, our our denomination was taken away, we would still be known as a child of God. Sure. And, and and I think that's an awesome word, especially for like I said, for this, this time, for this time of, of that we're living in um, with people that don't know who they are and searching for who they are. Um, yes. Get back to that basic of what is my identity in Christ? Sure. And I, I truly agree with that. Well, I want to thank you so much uh, for being a part of this. Thank you, Pastor. Um, I, I'm looking forward to this series and I'm glad that we started with you. I'm glad that you're that you were the first. You can call yourself the OG of the traveling stories. <laughs> uh, but um, I do want to say again, Brother Allen is the pastor at Belmont Church of God of Prophecy in Anderson. Can you get that address real quick, just in case any of our Anderson friends jump on? It's uh, 203 Belmont Drive. They're in Anderson. Definitely, and they have a Facebook page too. They'll have service times and all that kind of stuff. And um, sure. right now, I know it's kind of crazy time, so. They might be in the parking lot. They might be in the church. They might be on the uh, online. So they just at least look up the Facebook page and get all the updates from that. Correct? Sure. Yes. We, we, we keep the Facebook page updated regularly. So Definitely. Definitely. Well, we just wanted to say thank you so much for joining mm us. Um, and if anybody's watching this and you have a question, a comment, uh, uh, you need prayer, you need to know your identity, or you need sure. to take that next step of salvation, sanctification, or baptism with the Holy Ghost, um, you can leave it in the comments below, or you can direct message me or Pastor Allen. I know Pastor Allen wouldn't mind you direct messaging him. That's fine. Definitely, and we will definitely pray and help you as much as we possibly can, um, but we believe that this, uh, by this, by showing um, first of all, uniting with other people, not just a pastor being in one place and another pastor being in another place, but we're uniting together to share the same story. Um, and, and, and even if it's a different way by doing it like technology, like we're doing today, um, I believe that we can reach people far from Christ and let them know that God loves them and God wants to save them. And listen, God is not punishing us. He just wants to save us. <laughs> Amen. He Amen. wants to change Amen. our lives. So um, thank you so much, Brother Allen. We thank love you, you so much. Love you too, brother.
Thank you for everybody that's going to join in, that's joining in. Um, we're excited about this. Please continue to follow up with us. And um, God bless you. We love you. And Pastor Alan, any last words to say? And God bless you. And I appreciate you, Pastor Bob, and your family, and the Restoration Chapel Church. And, and anyone who sees this, uh, we're just praying for you that God, that you will find your identity in who he is. And you'll find your identity in him. So. Amen. Well, God bless you. And we